So today's topic class is all about force. So this will be Unit 3, Lesson 1. So let's have our vocabularies. The first word is force. Force is a push or pull acting on an object. Another one is resultant force. Resultant force is a sum of all forces acting on an object. We also have magnitude. Magnitude is the great size or extent of something. Another one is direction. Direction is the path along which something moves, lies, or points. Now I'm going to show you a video. This game is called Tug of War. So this video has something to do with our topic for today. So try to guess who wins, okay? Let's watch this. First one behind the green line wins. The group on the left Junior. is group so one, and this group we see here is group two. Okay, so who do you think will win? Is it group one or group two? Okay, we will find it out later. Now, again, I repeat this game named Tag of War has something to do with our topic for today, which is force. And what is all about force? Force is the push or pull acting on an object. Force has both magnitude and direction. Okay, we cannot see force, but we can see the effects of it, like it can change the shape of an object, it can make an object start moving, it can make a moving object move faster, it can slow down and stop a moving object, and it can change the direction of a moving object. We might not know, class, that uh, we use force in our day-to-day -day life. For example, opening and closing the door. Most of our doors makes use of push and pull operation. When you apply force and the door moves towards you, the force applied is said to be a pull force. On the other hand, when the door moves away from you, the force in action is the push force. Another example is sweeping the floor. Are you sweeping the floor too? Another one is opening a drawer. When we open the drawer, the drawer moves towards us, so the applied force is full force. Another one is walking. When we walk or run or jog, we exert force as well by pushing the earth away from us. Another one, cycling or riding a bicycle. When we ride a bicycle, we pedal it continuously to keep it in motion or to keep it moving. Pedaling is the force that we apply on a bicycle. Another one is playing chess. By simply moving a piece of the chess, you exert force. Another one is kicking a ball. When you kick the ball, you exert a push force. Another example is weight lifting. Playing guitar. Hitting the nail with a hammer. Another one is typing. Or just by simply lifting your hand, you exert force. Okay, now, all these forces put together is called a resultant force. Before we proceed, let's have a science fact. Who is this scientist again? He is Sir Isaac Newton. Now, Newton, or a big letter N, is the unit of force. It is named after Sir Isaac Newton. He was the one who discovered the theory of gravity and he also studied about forces and motion of objects. That is why Newton, the unit of force, is named after him. Now let's now let's go back. Resultant force is the sum of all forces acting on an object. To get the resultant force, we need to know the magnitude or the sizes and directions of all the forces. We use an arrow. To show the magnitude and direction of a force, when we say magnitude, the size of the force. And when we say direction, is it going to the left, right, upward, or downward? Now, the length of the arrow shows the magnitude or size of the force. If an arrow is long, the magnitude of force is big. So since this arrow is big, this is showing an 80 Newton force. On the other hand, if an arrow is short, the magnitude of force is 
small. Okay, since this arrow is small, this shows a 20 newton force. Now take note class that 1 centimeter of arrow is equal to 10 newton. The head of the arrow shows the direction of a force. I said, as I said a while ago, is it to the left or to the right? Now this arrow is to the left. Why? Because the head of the arrow is pointing to the left. Next, this arrow's head is pointing to the right. That is why the force is to the right. Now, how do we read a force? Okay, let's suppose this is an 80 newton force. So the magnitude is 80 newton and the arrow's head is pointing to the right. So let's say this force has a magnitude of 80 newton acting to the right. I repeat, this force has a magnitude of 80 newton acting to the right. Let's have another example. This is a small arrow. Suppose this is a 20 newton force. So the magnitude is 20 newton and the direction is to the left because the arrow's head is pointing to the left. So let's say this force has a magnitude of 20 newton acting to the left. Let's try this. We have this as an example, a 70 newton force. So can you tell me what is the magnitude of this force? It's 70 newton. That's right. Now, what is the direction of the force? Is it to the left or to the right? It's to the right because of the head of the arrow. So let's say the force has a magnitude of 70 newton acting to the right. Another example. So this is a 50 newton force. Can you tell me what is the magnitude of this force? It's 50 newton, right? It's 50 newton. Now can you tell me the can you tell me the direction? Is it to the left or to the right? It's to the left. That's right. So the force has a magnitude of 50 newton acting to the left. Now, let's go back to this video. Let's see who wins. Is it group 1 or group 2? Okay, so the winner is group 2. Since group 2 won, they have exerted bigger force than group 1. Okay, for your activity, you prepare a clean sheet of paper or a notebook and then you have to draw the following and read the forces. We have five forces here. Number 1, a 30 newton force. Number 2, 40 newton force. Number 3, a 70 newton force. Number 4, a 10 newton force. And number 5, a 16 newton force. Now, I'm going to do number 1 for you to have basis, okay? So, the magnitude is 30 newton. And the direction is going to the right because of the head of the arrow. So, I will say the force has a magnitude of 30 newton acting to the right. I repeat. The magnitude is 30 newton. So I wrote here the force has a magnitude of 30 newton. And since the arrow or the arrow's head is pointing to the right, I will say acting to the right. The force has a magnitude of 30 newton acting to the right. So now it's your turn to do number two, number three, number four, and number five. Now if you're finished with this one, your homework will be write at least 10 examples of applications of force that you do every day okay again on a clean sheet of paper you write 10 examples of applications of force that you do every day just like the examples that i mentioned a while ago opening and closing the door plug or unplug a switch and more okay you write at least 10. so this is for this afternoon have a great day and goodbye.